Shall we praise the Lord M. Wood? Shall we praise the Lord M. Wood? Come on, sing with us. We sing. Water, you turned into wine. And you opened the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Hey, into the darkness you shine. Oh, out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, no, no, none like you. Come on and help me sing, for our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God, God, you are higher. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Awesome in power. Come on, we talk about our great God. We talk about our God. Our God. Come on and say it. You wanna tell the and enemy? If our God is with us, then what this day? Come on and tell your prophet to say. If our God is for us, then who? Then who could ever and if our God is with us, if our God is with us, what can we do? And if our God, if our God is for us, who could ever? If our God is with us, if our God is with us, then what this day? Let's say it again. Tell your circumstances. Say. Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah. Come on, sing. There's no God like Come on, if you know it's Zion, help us sing. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Come on, and say it. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. No God like Jehovah. No God like Jehovah. No God like there's no God like I so high and low still couldn't find nobody No God like there's no God like there's no God You wanna raise it up and say No God like No God like there's no God like there's no God like there's no God like We serve the one and true living God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this next song. It says it's right here. So how great is our God? Sing with me. How great is God? Is our God? Yes, all will see how great. How great. Is our God. Come on and put your hands on it. Let's go, let's go. Come on and say, you're the name set. You're the name above all names. And he's a worthy say. You are worthy of all names. And our hearts will and sing. And our hearts will sing. Let's go, let's go. Come on and put your hands on it. Oh, 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. How great is our God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right. I, 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 amen. I had a song on my heart when I walked in the building this morning, but I pretty much forgot what it was. How great is our God. That is perfect. Our scripture this morning is coming from Ephesians chapter 4, 1 through 6. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope where you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for bringing us all here safely, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for those wonderful selections by our core. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the prayer that our, our Elder Lawrence Jackson provided for us, Lord, to, to motivate me to, to bring a message, Lord, that would be received by our congregation, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for our senior pastor, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for her family. I thank you, Lord, for the Elmwood family, Lord. Praise, Lord, that you continue to give us life, health, and strength. These things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Elmwood. I want to give honor to God this morning, who is the head of my life, to our senior pastor, Reverend Maria N. Crompton, to our elders, deacons, ushers, choir, worship coordinators, and sexton. I'd like to thank the Reverend for her guidance and leadership and her vision. Somebody said to me one time, a vision is not just a picture of what could be. It's an appeal to our better selves, a call to become something more, a call to become something more. I believe that Elmwood United Presbyterian Church was called to become something more. I believe that when you become a member of the wood, that Christ has called you to become something more. I see how we are woven into this fabric of this community by the many ministries that engage and support it. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Our youth ministry has accepted the call. When my sons are here at Sunday school or rehearsal for a play, they're with extended family. Elder Beverly and Deacon Eloise and that ministry, they've answered the call to become something more. It's not just a church environment that they're providing. It's a safe place for young people to grow, learn, and express themselves and be loved. I know that it says it takes a village, but when there's a fantastic church within that village, the village, the village becomes even greater. I was able to take part in virtual Sunday school. I taught the junior high school and high school class. And after covering our lesson for the morning, we talked about life. How are you students handling homeschooling? Is it difficult focusing all day in front of the computer? What do you want to major in? What colleges are you applying for? What scholarships are you applying for? How are you continuing to connect with your friends? We knew that it had something to do with more than just Sunday school. We had to provide guidance and give them an opportunity to discuss things they needed to get off their chest. It's such a blessing to see our young people mature and grow in the Lord and have fun in church. Let's keep making church a place where our kids want to be. Matthew 25 and 35 says, For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Our food ministry 
led by Deacon Sandra Jackson and Cafe 5000, led by Ms. Gretchen Brown. What a blessing to the city of East Orange they've been. They were already doing phenomenal work prior to March 2020, but even they were called to be something more. The lines tripled, and they were in position on the front lines. When people were out of work and unemployment was taking forever, they were here becoming something more. When the shelves at the local supermarket were empty and the lines were long because people were lining up to get paper towels and Lysol and the other folks were trying to get bread, eggs, and rice, they were here becoming something more. When 45 was taking too long to put the stimulus package together, these two ministries, with the help of the mighty men of faith, Troop 8, and community partners like the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and the Old Guard, were here to volunteer their services as well. Cafe 5000, as you know, distributes hot meals to the community every fourth Sunday, and they do an amazing job. As community ministry organizer for the Presbytery, this is one of the many ministries that I always mention, and I believe God wants us to duplicate this ministry across our presbytery. I have nonprofit organizations and corporations that are lining up for the, to, for the opportunity to volunteer with Cafe 5000. As a matter of fact, Chase Bank of Newark has agreed to come in on the 26th of December to volunteer to serve meals with Cafe 5000, and they're bringing a check with them. I love working beside you, Deacon Jackson and Gretchen Brown, and I love that you're answering the call to become something more. Psalms 100 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with praise and singing. I've seen firsthand how difficult it's been over the past year and a half for churches to make all of the adjustments in person to totally online and hybrid. Now, I know getting to this point did not come without its challenges, but I want to echo what's been said before. Elmwood has one of the tightest music and worship arts ministries in the game. <laughs> in the first half of 2020, the majority of churches you see online now were not set up to broadcast. It was a vision by our senior pastor and two ministries that wanted to be better and become even more before others thought it was necessary. I want to thank Tavon because whenever, thank Tavon because whenever I received a call from another church that had questions and needed consultation, he was always, always willing to become some more, something more, and he was always willing to help churches who wanted to have the ability to worship with their online community. I've got friends and family members from all over the country that view our services online. Some check our 930 service, and then they hit their 11 o'clock service. We make a joyful noise unto the Lord. They enjoy our musicians. They enjoy Vin Roy as he lead core and they never disappoint. So how do we take this hybrid worship experience to the next level? How does it become something more? We have a social media extraordinaire named Christine. She engages, amen, amen. She engages with our online viewers. Some of you might have questions, you wanna request prayer, or even join the church. She is a blessing to our ministry, and to our church. Proverbs 18 and 22. Whosoever findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtain a favor of the Lord. The past 20 months have affected our relationships with our loved ones in many different ways. Some households were blessed enough to even see an increase in family members. Amen. <laughs> and some unfortunately suffered loss. Levels of anxiety have increased with mounting fears regarding one's own potential death, the loss of a loved one, job insecurity, 
loss of contact with nature, and financial stress, just to name a few. Of these ways, the dynamics of our relationships have been adversely impacted. Some of us were fortunate enough to work from home and be in the presence of our lovely spouses and families all day long. <laughs> That's right. Now combine that with homeschooling with the kids five days out of the week. The Committed Couples Ministry, formerly known as Marriage Enrichment, met monthly online, and we shared our experiences and even had guest facilitators as they helped us acknowledge that there are difficult conversations that needed to be had. We talked about unmasking, the importance of communication, and just simply acknowledging each other. We prayed together, laughed at each other, and learned more about our significant others. One of the unique things about this ministry is that you meet, they meet you where you are in your relationship journey. No expectations for you to be perfect. You've got couples that have been married for five years, 10 years, 30 years, and 40 years, and we all learn from each other. We look forward to getting those emails from Elder Karen Jackson about the activities for the evening. We thank you. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, pray without ceasing. How many of you know we got a praying senior pastor? <laughs> Amen. Those morning prayer calls were a blessing to my household. Pastor described the midweek man of prayer as a spiritual nourishment to feed the souls, and it did. I remember me and Masan jumping on early just to hear our dear sister, Ania Mack, lead a short devotional and to see who was calling him from the furthest away. It made me proud to be a member of a church that was investing the time to bring souls closer to God on a Wednesday morning. And if that wasn't enough, our reverend had to take it a step further. She was challenged to become something more as well. She was bringing it to your doorstep. The pastoral care ministry and our reverend, and of course, little Noah, was doing the pastor's pull-ups, checking up on folks that may not have been heard from in a minute, or they were still able to take or weren't able to take advantage of the online services. That was a blessing to our congregation. I remember seeing the pictures, and I think that we are blessed to have a senior pastor who would take time to do that. In closing, I want to bring it back to Ephesians 4 and 1 that asks you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Our church needs you now more than ever. This community in this city needs you now more than ever. Our members from all over the world who have joined the wood because of what they've witnessed through Wi-Fi need you now more than ever so that they can answer the call in their household, in their community, to become something more. And remember, the scripture says, be completely humble, be gentle, be patient and bearing with one another in love. And let's not forget, when we have the opportunity to pull our young people into our ministry, because when I was a kid, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> Elmwood needs not just to stay alive, but we need to continue to thrive. Let's make sure that this next generation is ready to step up. Let's keep engaging them, equipping them, and eventually empowering them to live worthy of the calling that they have received. I thank you, Elmwood. God bless you. Love you.